Hi all. I've been meaning to make this video for a while because I think it's very important for people to understand this simple truth and apply it for their health as some of my friends have done with very dramatic and predictable results. So what I want to talk to you about today is diabetes. And diabetes is a major concern in the modern world. And there are some very simple things that can be done that will minimize it, that will, in fact, allow you to deal with even the most severe circumstances from what I've seen thus far. So we already know that cannabis users have thinner waistlines and have lower levels of diabetes. So that's a hint, something's going on. And as I continuously try to educate people about, um, we do know that the CB1 receptor protects cells while sugar burning and that the CB2 receptor protects cells by turning on fat burning, which is intrinsically a safer mode of generating energy. And hence, things like the ketogenic diet and consumption of polyunsaturated fats, all of which promote fat burning, uh, are beneficial to health. So let's look more closely at what's going on. I do have already a video out there on metabolic plasticity and that's really the heart of uh, many things. So what we're going to look at now is how that concept applies directly to diabetes. So uh, just the overall framework for my thinking once again is that flowing energy metabolically generated in an efficient manner, the electron transport system, will generate free radicals and when there's perturbs in the biochemical flow, those free radicals when produced in excess in particular will have consequences and the cells need to establish a metabolic profile that allows them to survive conditions that would otherwise uh, cause their own cell death by virtue of excess free radical production. So. What's going on with diabetes is that we're consuming too many carbohydrates, burning them as our major fuel source. And as we do that, we make too many free radicals and the cells then have to do reshuffling of their flow patterns, their metabolic flow patterns in order to survive. What do they do? One of the things that, they, uh, that has to be done in order for them to survive is well let's let me back up glucose in your blood in high levels has a physiological consequence that being osmotic pressure so for the whole organism to physiologically function correctly sugar levels must be maintained at a uh, within an appropriate range to provide us with the energy and yet to not uh create an excess of osmotic pressure, which would be physiologically damaging. So the insulin producing cells of the pancreas are stimulated to turn on insulin production because what insulin does is it's one of these cell cell communicators that via a receptor on a cell surface says, turn on the transportation of sugar into the cell and turn on the metabolism of the sugar in the cell what we're going to do is the cells are going to take care of the systemic problem of having too much glucose by burning it, which can be fine under certain circumstances and can be deadly under others. So let's look at what's going on here. If you're making too many free radicals, one of the metabolic plasticities that can be implemented is to turn on fat synthesis. Because if you're synthesizing fat, you're not burning it. So there's always a balancing act going on between synthesizing things in cells and degrading things. Hence, we have flow. You eat, you get rid of your crap, right? It's that simple on a cellular level. It's that simple on an organismic level. It's the same story on a, on a societal level, you know? We consume too much pro-inflammatory type of energy and we generate too much friction of life, all of the waste. And what can we do? We can recycle it. And that in turn improves the efficiency and health of the 
society. It's the same within us. So cells will turn on fat synthesis to protect themselves from burning. Hence, you have overweight as really a symptom of people consuming too many carbohydrates and the cells trying to protect themselves from damaging themselves too much so they shut it down. Hence, you have on one level insulin-resistant diabetes. So to give insulin under those circumstances is, in my perspective, organically stupid. Because what are you doing? Your cells have already told you we are having a problem. We are making too many free radicals, which is going to damage us and serve potentially as the basis for formation of cancer or heart disease or other related events that occur from depositing fat instead of burning fat. So, what happens if you turn on fat burning in a diabetic? Well, <laughs> you solve the problem, largely. And that's what one of the main anti-diabetic drugs does. Uh, metformin turns on fat burning via AMP kinase, which you may or may not have heard me speak of, but that's the master controller of whether you turn on fat burning or you maintain and turn on sugar burning. AMP kinase, when activated, turns on fat burning. Metformin does that. So metformin has biologically functional activity. And it also has some anti-cancer activity. Because remember, and this is the key point we're going to, your endocannabinoid system turns on fat burning via the CB2 receptor. So right there's your solution. Consume enough cannabis and you eliminate the problem that's both producing diabetes to begin with, as well as the manifestation of uh, the disease. So enough cannabis will control sugar levels via turning on fat burning. And I have two friends, both of whom are overweight, both of whom are insulin-dependent diabetics, who for months now have turned on fat burning with high doses of cannabis and some nutraceuticals to supplement it all. And they're no longer using any insulin and they're losing weight and they're feeling much healthier. So here is just another example of how institutionalized medicine, because they don't understand the physics of life, don't understand what needs to be done. And the whole pharmaceutical mentality, you know, has the blinders on so they can't begin to see what's really going on. If you don't understand the basic physics of how life works, how could you possibly expect to have rational solutions? I mean, they uncover things that can be beneficial and metformin can be beneficial, but the people I've met uh, don't like the side effects, uh, whatever it is, you know, I, I, I've never taken it. Um, so instead, use cannabis and nutraceuticals and more importantly, control your diet. Go on a ketogenic diet and turn on fat burning. Remember, all of the different herbs, Chinese medicines, all of the Sanskrit medicines, all of these medicines, the active ingredients typically turn on fat burning. That's why they're healthy for you. So we have to use our brains to feed back what we're doing to ourselves. Are we doing the right diets that are going to maintain the necessary level of free radical production because we're doing things, but without creating an excess that's fostered by our diet and our thought patterns that are associated with all of that. Again, the aggression and the stress that comes with being cannabinoid deficient we are holistic organisms, part of a holistic world. And until we start to understand that we are nothing more than quantized probes and adaptability as part of the big chemistry set of life's unfolding, then we don't get it and we do the stupid things. Be smart. Turn on, tune in, and drop in. Bye.